Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain and Paint and Porcelain Exchange. I am also going to be working on a Santa Claus. And this is actually the first Santa Claus I've ever done. Well, if you're a new painter and uh, you've never painted something before, the first thing you need to do is find an example that you think is simple enough to follow and you need to find something that, that you uh, want to paint. You have to really want to paint it. Now, I'm a Father Christmas person. I'm not a Santa Claus person. So I found this in the China Decorator. It's a great picture of Santa Claus. It was the 1995 edition and it was done by Annalie Crocker from Iowa. And there's nothing in the book that tells you how to do it or what way to do it, or any of that. So um, I had to kind of develop it from scratch, but I did trace and I used the tracing for my, for my plate. And this is what my plate came out like. So this is my plate. I know his eyes are weird and I will try to fix that on upcoming plates, but you notice it has kind of a matte feel to it. I wanted that too. I didn't put flux in anything on this. I just let it do its thing. So um, we're going to learn the holly border, and we're also going to learn how to do raised paste with gold. And it's a, the simple raised paste, obviously, because we're, we're, I'm gearing towards beginners. It's the kind with the dots. And then you can elaborate and do something else. I wanted to let you know, in my process of painting this a million times to get ready for today, I also tried it on a tea towel. Now, this has not been fired yet, but the center section that is just the circle with Santa's picture in it is perfect for a tea tile. So if those of you out there want to use it just for a tea tile and not put a border on it, you can. And in fact, this took me very little time. I, I did it last night in about an hour. And um, so I'm thinking that it might be something that you'd want to use as a gift, a hostess gift or something like that. Okay, colors for today are going to be now you don't have to have these, but you need something close to these, especially for the face. I'm lucky, um, I have portrait colors, but um, if you don't, there are other colors that work. So this is a light flesh and this is flesh. If you don't have those colors, this is a, almost like an old ivory, gold, old ivory. And this, you could use a pompadour. I think pompadour would work pretty well for this. This is my carnation. You could use Persian. Um, this is chartreuse, moss green, which is a medium green. I also have shading green on here. We're going to do the background in shading green. I, my first plate, I did the background in a mixture of colors. Baby blue just for his eyes and a little bit of brown. So, um, and it's warm brown gray. I have a few favorite shadow colors that I like to use. If you don't have that, you could use a gray. As far as brushes, let's talk brushes. You're gonna need Q-tips, by the way. Um, there are three brushes that I think if I didn't have, I couldn't paint. This is my number 10. I have to have a number 10. If you're a beginner, that's one you have to have. I think another one you have to have is a long scroller. I have used this for berries. I have used this for outlining leaves. I've used it for veining on leaves, and it's a must, I think. The other one that I use a lot is this itty bitty teeny tiny, I call it my micro brush. I don't know what the real thing is, but it's um, how many odds? Let's see. It's a five zero brush. And I use that for the wrinkles on Santa's forehead and under his eyes in this. So it's very useful. Um, I also have a number two, a little number two square shader for my um, holly. And uh, I also have my round. I love these rounded brushes. Um, so if you have any, they aren't really filberts. They're different than filberts because they come to a point at the end. I got them from Brigitte Porter, if you're interested. So let's get started Art. here. I'm just using my regular, um, my turpenoid. And my, uh, I also have, you know, I've gotten hooked now on uh, turpenoid natural and I really like them. So that, that those are the things I'm using. Uh, for this and it does dry pretty well. So I, I'm pretty pleased. I'm going to start with my light flesh I'll Go through the center of his head here. So we're going to do the middle of his head. I wiped off my plate with um, Isopropyl alcohol before I got started and I'm just I'm just really going to paint most of it like this because I can put the pink on over this the the, the fleshy darker fleshy tones 
And so that's why I'm, I'm doing this right now. I'm just doing the lighter colors. You're gonna paint his cheeks a little bit, paint this cheek a little bit, and it's all with this light color. And it, if you don't have this color, and paint this front ridge of his nose, because that's actually where it's lighter. If you don't have this light color, you can use, like I said, an ivory, and it will work fine. Now, I don't clean my brush, and I side load, and I only side, let me show you where I'm side loading. I'm using this stuff down here, just pulling it very lightly, because I we're going light on this. So I'm just putting, that's too light. You can test it on your tile. You know, that's the reason people say, why do I have a tile? Besides mixing, you can test your colors on your tile to see um, how they work. Okay, so I turn him this way because I'm going under here. You know, you paint towards yourself. And I'm just putting the pink on. I need a little more pink here. Up in here, he has some pink. And I'm lifting. I'm going like this with my brush, not quite so dramatically, but you get the idea. And there's a little over in here. That's because of his hat. It's almost like a shadow. Okay. I mean, you're being very delicate. Now, his cheeks down the side here and his cheek, let me get a little more red. This is flesh. Oops, too much. Press it on your towel if you have too much. Pull it down. I'm using a big brush, so don't be afraid of your big brushes. Hold them back a little further on the handle, and that will give you a little better control. When it comes to stuff like this, you want to do short little strokes to kind of introduce the color without messing too much up. It's I almost think of it as little C strokes around the bottom here. He has very red cheeks. See, here's his picture. That's what I'm going by. You can print out the picture that I posted. Uh, that's my painting if you want just so you get the idea of where the red is and where the colors are. Sometimes it's easier to have something in front of you. You're going to do this side of his nose because it's quite red. Of course, it's Santa Claus. And the middle of his nose, oops, I'm going to have to do it this way. You have to pay attention to your brush. It will tell you which way it wants to turn and if it can turn. And then under the eyes. Now, under the eyes is important because that's where you're going to be putting some of these creases and wrinkles and you want to get them so you have a little dark to work with okay and then i'm going to pat it and i'm just going to pat this off a little bit okay i still want this side of his cheek a little redder there we go. Oh, well, I'm just going to bring that up to his nose and then redo his nose here. Okay. All right. So that's that's Santa's so far. The other place I'm going to add a little red is under his eyebrows. That's here. It'll make his eyebrows stand out. I have to see where this eyebrow is. It's always confusing to me. There. That's a little, little dark. Let's put a little more light on it there. Okay. All right. So that's basically my Santa at this point. We'll put a little red right down here too on his nose. One more. There we go. Okay. All righty. Not too hard, huh? Now, before I get too far along, I want to do his eyebrows and I want to do his um, 
his mouth, which is down in here. And so I'm going to take first um, one of my stubs and I'm going to, he has like an area here that has like a little knob on it, on his nose. So I just did that with that. The eyes are pretty much wiped out. I just want to make sure that they are. Okay. So I'm going to take my micro brush. I just call it a micro brush. It's the five zero brush. And because I've done things before and they've been too dark, I'm using my warm brown gray to do the nostrils this time. And the next time, if I want to do them in black, I can do them. Okay. And same thing with his eyes. Now I have to look at him and look at the picture. And I'm going to put one eye here in a light brown. I'm going to put the other eye right here. What do you think? Better? Yeah, I think it's better. You want white paint, just paint in his eyelashes. Real, do it kind of gingerly, you know? Lift, lift, lift. Get a big dollop on there and lift, lift, lift. And then the same thing over on this side. Lift, 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 lift. Okay. Next time you can do them better. That's not enough. Here we go. Okay. We're going to take, I'm siloing, I'm using warm brown gray. You can use gray if you want. And I'm just putting a little color here because this is the side that's going to be in the shadow right there. And I'm also going to put a little color, oops, I'm also going to put a little color right here. You can turn your brush over when it's side loaded and the other side won't have anything on it. And that'll help you tone down the color if you think the color is too bright. I'm going to put a little brown here, here, and a little brown in here. Okay, that's it. Wipe off my brush and then I'm going to pull it so that it's just not real obvious. Okay, can you see what I've done so far? Okay, and now I'm going to go, oh, he's got a little ear over here. Let's take a little flesh, put on the ear. And then let's take a little bit, I'm sorry, the light flesh and take a little bit of the darker flesh, oops, and put on the ear. It, it's kind of hidden by all this fur, his uh, beard and everything, so you don't need to technically get it perfect. You just need to get it so it looks like somebody's flesh. <laughs> That's it. It's just a fleshy piece there. All right, now I'm going to go into the cap. Um, I like the cap next because um, it, it's pretty cool. The only thing I will add, you see this little ball here? It's not on the original. Until I was painting last night, I really didn't catch it. So right here, is it here? Yeah, here, he has a little ball. And that's like the fur on the end of his cap. If you want to put it on, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. All right, now we're moving into the easier things. I'm taking the carnation, and I'm just going to put it on. It's going to be darker in the back, back here, than it is up there, because that's kind of where the light's coming from. And you just want to get it next to things up there, but you don't want to get it over like the holly and stuff. So you're kind of piecemealing it through. And pulling it. Pulling the color. And then as you get like back in this section here, it's going to be darker. And down in here, it's going to be darker. Over here, it's going to be darker. And then we're going to do this angle down here. This is really dark. I'm not getting there. Now, you guys probably know what I'm going to say. If you can't get it as dark as you want it, you can either do it the next time or you can take a sponge. Do like I've told you before. We take the sponge. We make a circle around our finger. And we pad 
pad, 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 pad. Okay, like that. And then we tap it. I just want to get that. We tap it lightly. Okay. And you can even use this to even take off some of the color if you want in a couple of places. Oops, that's a little too much, but that'll work for me. Okay, so we just want a little bit of color on here. We don't want a whole ton of color. You can always put the darker red on next time. I might put a little dark red in the very end here this time because I kind of want it to be really deep by the time we're done. And right here, I really want it to be very deep. Okay. Alrighty, now we're gonna do the holly on the head. I'm using a number two square shader, full load of of chartreuse with a side load of moss. And I'm just gonna start with these little guys here. Follow around the edges a little bit. That's that guy. And there should be one right here, but unfortunately I kind of covered him up. So let me, let me dig him out here. He's here, 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 okay. And this one is here, 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 here. And then we have to get the, let's take the color off the beard right here. I'm using a stump. That's what these are. And I clean them by, by using sandpaper on them. I have a little sandpaper thing right here that I use. You can use a black too. But when I'm done, I rub them forward and I clean them. And I clean them every time I use them because otherwise you end up with pretty much a mess. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna put these in. Now that you can do it that way where you do it with the two colors and that's perfectly fine. And you could do it here. So to get the real dark down at the base and then come around to the edges and the edges get a little bit of dark on them, that's fine. You can also do it so it's all one color and then just take your darkest color and go around and just do the edges. But you wanna pull out a little bit of highlight there, just a little bit of highlight. These are very tiny, so you know, if you don't get them perfect this time, that's fine. You can, you can spruce them up the next time with whatever you need to do. You can do one side in one color and one side in the other like this to give it a little, give it a little shading. Whatever you think will work. I think there's one, here. yeah, there is one here. There's one here and we're gonna do one here. Main thing right now is just to get the green on them. Don't worry too much about the shading. Next time you can worry about the shading. The only other thing that's important on this time is to make sure that you get um, a vein up the middle so you know which direction they're going. Because next time you may not remember. Oops. Here we go, one more. I'm doing them in a light green because I tried doing them in a dark green on the first fire and they really didn't work for me. So I'm just suggesting them, and then I'm gonna take my liner and I'm gonna dip it in the green. And I'm just gonna pull from the bottom up just a tad. I have to see what way these go. And if they're a little dark, I'll fix them. Oops, need a little more. There we go. Now they're a little dark, so I'm gonna take my little brush here. I've got a glob I don't want. And I'll just spread that out at the bottom. Same thing here. 
This one's a little dark. Let's clean him up. Oh, he doesn't even have a guy down. Oh, there, went back down the middle. Okay. Next time I will take a little more pen and do a little fancy stuff with it. I'm also going to take this um, scroller and I'm going to use my carnation and I'm going to put my berries back in where they were supposed to be. So there's a couple up in here. And there's a couple down in here. Oh, I have one up in here, a couple up in here. Oops, I missed a holly leaf. I don't want to miss that one. I kind of like that one there. There's this one right here. Now, obviously, when I painted my first one, my first Santa, I went a lot slower than this. You have to remember I'm doing this so that you can see how to do it in a short period of time, but that doesn't mean that you need to do it in the same period of time. So there's the holly on his, his hat. Now, I want to do the green in the background before I do his beard because it's really important to get his beard right. Okay, so two things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to put the dark in his beard because I think... It, it helps you see what's going on a little bit. I'm using my rounded brush just to put some brown in here now. I'm gonna fix that. It's not gonna stay like that. And I'm also gonna put some brown, brown in. Let me, I gotta get my bigger brush now. I'm gonna put some brown in here. That's a little heavy. There we go. And then, this is the simple part. You take brown, and you see these outside things here, these round curls? I'm using my number 10, and I'm just going around and doing these exactly the way they say to do them, like this. You see that? Getting a little paint each time if I need it. Side loading and doing this. And then I'm following that. And I'm following this. My little whiskers there, little whiskers there. And um, it's a little bit dark right along here on him too. And we've got a few here in front, okay. So now he looks kind of weird, doesn't he? What we're gonna do is take our, our handy dandy um, Q-tip and we're just gonna, oh, and we're gonna paint the background. Let's paint the background too. So we're gonna start with painting the background. We're gonna do a shading green on the background. You're gonna do it darker on this side, lighter on the other side. And don't worry about it. You can, you can even it up with your, your um, your eraser or whatever you have handy. And you just have to be careful going around Santa here. You can leave this. If you're, if you're so happy with your Santa and you don't want to do this, you can leave it and just do the next step with me. And then put this on next time. But then you're going to have to watch out for where his fur, I mean his beard is. And I'll tell you, his beard, that's one of the beauties of this is his beard goes into the background. And that's what you want. I'm just putting the green in. Just put it in. Um, it's lighter on this side than this side, but if you don't manage that this time, you can do that next time. So just get it in, keep it smooth, as smooth as possible. Just go around. And like I said, if you don't get that outside circle perfect, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You're also going to have it a little darker down here than it is up at the top. So I'm putting in darker here. And then go up in here, up in here, and then up in here, and down in here. Just try to get around these little, little guys here and there. Okay. And then you're gonna, then you're gonna smooth it out again. I need a little oil. A 
but there's nothing much you can do. I will smooth out the circle at the end, and then I want to just kind of lighten this area here. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna pull it down this way a little. Okay. All right. All right. Now, using your Q-tip, you're gonna take and start creating his, his fur, okay? So, um, we're gonna do this. We're gonna come around here and we're gonna go. And we're gonna do maybe this. You're gonna do a little of this. You're gonna do a little of this. Do it very lightly. Then down here, you're gonna just pull his fur around. Pull it into the background, that's what you want. When it gets dirty, get another one, do the same thing. And look at it as you're doing it. Now it's up to you to decide what looks good. Do a few up here. A few down here. I'm going to do a little right here on his beard. I mean, his mustache. Oops. You don't want that green coming back. So if you start getting green on there, switch. And then when you're all done, take your brush, make sure you have the green out of it. And you're just gonna brush over it lightly get any lines that may have been created by the Q-tip to look less liney. You can press, pull up some of those colors. What you wanna do is you wanna make it furry. This is the only chance you have of making it, of pulling those, those, those whiskers out into the background. This is the only chance you have. And if you don't like it, put some green back on it. And try again. Okay. There we go. Make sure you like it because you're stuck with it at this point. Oh, geez. The only other thing I forgot to do is this little ball up here. Oh, not quite that dark. I'm just gonna do this like this there. Okay, but, uh, let me show you what I got done so far, okay? It's a little bit different colors, but I think it will work fine. This is what you should have so far. And then next time, we will do it a little bit more and um, really get it so that it's better. Pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. 
Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.